Hello, I'm Ranger Alex, and welcome to my presentation on covered bridges. Covered bridges are icons of America's past, reminders of a more pastoral way of life. Yet why were they built? The ideas range from the ridiculous, saying they were created to provide a secret spot to kiss your lover, to the more practical, that they were built to look like barns so animals would be unafraid to go into them. To truly understand why, we have to go back to the minds of the pioneers. So journey with me back to the year 1821, the year Missouri became a state. At this point in time, Missouri is lightly populated, although it was experiencing a population boom. And with an increase in population, you need new transportation routes, to which a stream such as the one behind me are barriers. So what are you gonna do? Build a bridge, of course. And when I say you, I mean you and the local community. At this point in time, the state and federal governments generally were not involved in bridge building projects. So we decided we need a bridge. What are we going to build the bridge out of? Well, there's concrete. Concrete is very strong and you can mix and pour it at your construction site, making it very convenient. Although it was known to the ancient Romans, unfortunately, the manufacture of concrete was lost until 1824, which does our settlers in 1821 no good. Then there's iron. Iron is light, iron is strong, and the first iron bridge was built in 1779, so by now it is a proven construction technique. It's also very expensive, so unless you're building a bridge in an area that has lots of iron and coal, iron is no good. Brick is a common construction material. Although it is a manufactured product, which increases your construction cost. You would also end up having to tra transport tons of bricks through poor quality roads. So brick is no good either. Stone is of course the most classic bridge building material and it's also readily available being all over the place. Although you do need to get it out of the ground by hand. The main problem with building with stone is that it's like a giant jigsaw puzzle. If you don't do it properly, it will fall down on you. So in order to build with stone, you need a team of skilled craftsmen. And whenever you have skilled craftsmen, it increases the cost of the project. So for a small town, Stone is no good. Lastly, there's wood. Wood is light, wood is moderately strong, but its main advantage is it's all over the place. As you can see, we're in a forest, and it was even more heavily wooded back during this era of settlement. So if you really wanted to, you could cut down trees and fashion the wood at your construction site. Or if you would prefer a more finished bridge, you can contract with the local lumber mill and they would cut the boards for you. You might even be able to float it downstream to your construction site. Another advantage is that everyone in your local community know how to work with wood. After all, if you wanted a house, you had to build it yourself. If you wanted a barn, you had to build it yourself. If you wanted chairs, tables, you had to make it yourself, probably out of wood. So not only does everyone know how to work with wood, they probably have the tools with which to do it. And because they would benefit from a bridge as well, they would work on the project and their free labor would greatly decrease the project's overall cost. 
Now, wood does have some problems. The problem with wood is if you leave it outside, it will rot. And I don't know about you, but if I'm gonna build a bridge, I'm gonna wanna make sure that it lasts. And that's where the covering in a cover bridge comes into play. It protects the structural elements of the bridge from the weather. The bridge builders estimated that an uncovered bridge would only last 10 years, whereas a covered bridge would last 80. Today, we know that covered bridges can last much, much longer. In fact, the oldest covered bridge in the United States is a whopping 187 years old. Covered bridges were primarily built from 1800 till the Civil War. After the Civil War, advances in other bridge building techniques like iron and concrete generally took over from building wooden covered bridges, although they were created up to almost the 1900s. Today, only a small fraction of covered bridges remain, a lasting tribute to the adaptability and ingenuity of their builders. For more information on this and other cultural and natural history topics, please visit our website at www.mostateparks.com. Thank you, and that's all from Ranger Alex.